So welcome to Cooking Fun with Joanna, and I am your host, Joanna Hadaraska with Nutrition in Motion. I am a holistic nutritionist and a inflammation expert. And uh, today we are going to make some Thanksgiving sides, which are going to be healthier than the, than the, than the usual um, casseroles and things like that. We're going to make a wild rice butternut squash stuffing, and we're also going to make... Um, Brussels sprouts with vermouth and bacon. And it's gonna also have some dates and uh, pepitas in it. So if you haven't already, hopefully you already took your one cup of wild rice and soaked it in, in two cups of water. And then we're gonna add another quarter or half a cup of vegetable broth to that so that, um, and then, um, turned it on. So we're going to actually start cooking it. And then while that's cooking, we're going to um, saute onions, butternut squash, and whatever else needs to go with that. Um, and then it's going to be added to the rice. And then while one is sauteing, then we still have to cut up all the Brussels sprouts because we got to saute all that too. So hopefully in, within the hour, we'll have both of those side dishes done. And you will love them, and the it will enhance your your um, Thanksgiving. So, what I, I, th I think in the directions I had mentioned, we needed two pans. Definitely do. So I am trying. I need. I'm going to use the big 12 inch for the um, for the Brussels sprouts. But I'm going to need another one for the. I need another one for uh, the butternut squash. I think a ten. I think a twelve inch is probably too big. Okay, I'm going to use this. It doesn't matter. We'll figure. I'll figure it out, right? But I'm having the same challenge as you're probably having with what size pot do I need? So oh, I'm actually going to use the 10, the 10 inch pan for the cloth because I don't have enough space on my range for both. And I'm going to put the, the rice on the back burner. I'm going to turn it on and put it on into, whoops, I put the back burner and I turned on the front one. So put on the rear burner and turn on that rice so that it starts to cook because it's even, with it soaked, It'll take probably 20, 25 minutes for it to get soft enough. If you haven't soaked it, it'll probably take an hour and a half, just to give you an idea. So either way, if you're at home watching this and as a recording, you can just come back and look at what we need to do for the for the rice because you've got to wait till that rice cooks as well before you can blend the, the sauteed butternut squash and all the other goodies in with the... Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetable broth because we, I need to add another half a cup of liquid into that into that pot. So I have one cup of rice and two, two cups of water, which I soaked since noon today. So that's been five hours. I'm going to now add another half a cup of the half broth. And let kind of simmer and come to a boil, and everything will be fine and dandy. If you have a lid, that will probably be a good thing too. I'm going to put mine on, on this angle. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do you want to start the Brussels sprouts first? No, we'll do this. We'll do the butternut squash. And then we'll do the Brussels sprouts. So go ahead and turn on your burner, whether it's uh, the electric. If it's electric, you'll want to turn it on high to get it to heat up. If it's stove, it'll be on medium. And you're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there once it starts to heat up. You need an onion. So we're going to chop up an onion. I'm going to be chopping up a good portion of this bag, if not all of it. We're gonna add some garlic um, and some bacon. 
because bacon makes everything taste better, right? Of course. Yep. So in the Brussels sprouts, uh, we're gonna mince up one garlic and um, probably three or four strips of bacon, depending on how much you're using. And we're gonna probably cook the bacon. The bacon is gonna go in that pan first. So it, the more bacon fat we have, the less olive oil we have to put in. I suppose my bacon, because I don't use it that often, so I put it into small little containers. So I'm going to take three of my half slices and uh, chop up. That's what I'm going to do first is chop up my, my bacon. And mine is still a little frozen, so I'm not sure I can split the pieces off here. But I can. It's all about doing the best you can with whatever it is that you got in front of your nose at the moment. And I have lots of frost coming off of that bacon, so I'm going to scrape that off because you don't need that. So I'm just going to, you're going to basically cut it up into like half inch um, strips. We're not half inch, they're, they're going to be, they're, it's kind of diced, but into half inch rectangular pieces. So it's not exactly diced. But if you want to dice it, you can do that too. So that's the first thing to do. That's hot. Just put the bacon in there. And then we're going to go ahead and chop up the onion. We're going to cut the end off. Cut it in half. Peel the outer skin, the layer off. Keep the tail on and make sure you get that, that thin, filmy layer off. It's hard to cook. This, we're not, we're not going to, we're going to dice it loosely, so to speak. So just cut four, um, four sections and then cut it into quarter inch. I guess it's kind of dicey. And my onions are my my bacon is now starting to sizzle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it up so that it it starts to actually cook. If you want to get that a little bit brown too and get release some of that. Bacon. So if you have the bacon kind of stuck together like mine is right now, then you'll just want to split it up. And if you want to make more, go right ahead. One is left. That's okay too. This is the fun part of playing with the food, right? Kind of strip the so you do the best you can with getting more of the pieces flat on the and the actual surface of the pan. Some pieces aren't breaking apart, so I'm just not going to deal with it. So once you once you cook once you start chopping the onion, then you can put the onion into, into that bacon. Mm -hmm. And if you're using a nonstick pan, it's even better because you don't you won't have to use quite as much oil. Okay. Now here I am. This I said this was supposed to be for the butternut squash, and this is actually for the uh, for the Brussels sprouts. But you know what? Maybe we'll put bacon in both of them. I I'm changing the recipe. I'm putting bacon and the butternut squash into, into the small dish. And I'm gonna put bacon into both of them. How's that for? Oh, okay. You know, because this, this smaller pan is actually for the for the butternut squash. So I put in half an onion there 
And now I'm gonna take these big cubes and actually cut, cut them smaller. So you're gonna do, you're gonna try to do about a cup of the butternut squash. Cut it into cubes or into, what are these half inch, half inch max sticks? Maybe that's what I'll call them. The smaller you chop them up, the, eat, the faster they'll cook. So are we doing the butternut? easier to eat. What? I'm, I'm confused. We're doing the butternut squash first? We're doing the butternut squash first, yeah. So okay. I started I started one way and... Okay, so we're putting bacon in the that butternut too. Squash. Okay. And I'm that's confused. where I'm at. But we're going to put bacon into both of them, so... But, okay. Uh, put it out here. I confuse myself sometimes. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you at the same time. Yeah, only because I, I have more butternut squash than I do Brussels sprouts. So I have to switch pans. Okay. So I, I have the opposite way. I have more, well, I actually have a lot of butternut squash, but I was thinking I would make something else out of it too. Because if I like this, if I like this, then I have to make more for, for Thursday. Yeah, and I had a lot, I had a lot, I got a lot at the store. So I just figured I'd double the recipe because I could eventually either take it to my brothers or freeze it, so. Yeah. But it's nice that you can already buy it chopped, you know, because oh, yeah. if you bought a fresh one, they're not that fresh. Unless you got it right out of somebody's garden, in which case, then it is fresh. But you're just gonna like, you know, you're gonna just throw this all into that pan and just let it kind of sit there because we want to caramelize it. And we want to let the, the sugars come out and, and sweeten it up. out of it today because my flight got in last night at 12 30 and I was supposed to get in at 7 15. So I'm a little sleep deprived today. I think this is the first time. Usually, if I'm uh, if I'm tired, I'm always hungry. Today, I haven't been hungry all day. This will be my first meal today. And it's funny. I'm like the opposite. I never get hungry when I'm tired. Yeah, I just I just wasn't hungry at all today. And most of the time although, I'm starving when I'm tired. Although so. I will I will crave I will crave carbs though. I'll crave like a bunch of junk food when I'm tired. So today I'm just not craving anything. Yeah. You know, but it's it's all about going with what your body feels like. And if it doesn't feel like food, then don't feed it food. I think I, I think I probably still have enough uh, in reserves. And I did dance at the wedding and I did dance in heels. Yay! And it was so much fun. All right, so this is what mine looks like. So 
So I've just got the pan covered. And I think I'm, I'm I could probably add a couple more wedges, but I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So we're just going to leave that there for a little bit. And, this, and if, if you want to get the spices together, we're going to have um, curry powder, cinnamon, uh, the anchovy pepper, uh, some dried cherries, parsley, some sage, and walnuts. But the walnuts will go in last, and I think the spices will go later as well. So my suggestion right now is, okay, this is this is cooking. I love it when you stir it and the, the pieces jump out. So right now, go ahead and just stir everything. But you're not really going to do anything. You're just going to let this sit. So we're going to switch over to the Brussels sprouts and get those started as well. Okay. So turn on the burner for your Brussels sprouts. My rice is only barely just thinking about boiling. I think I'm going to move that to the other burner in the back so I have more space. Now we're going to start the, the, the Brussels sprouts. So turn that pan on and we're going to do the same thing we did with the, the bacon. <laughs> It up. Put that into the pan. Now let that pan heat up. Cut the bacon in half and cut it down the middle and then cut it into half inch slices. And then once you've done that, then you can add that into that heated pan. And again, if you've got a nonstick, that's going to be your best friend. So we're going to take this bacon and put it into as quickly as I want it. But I'm putting the bacon in anyway. And then we're going to do the same thing with the onion that we did with the first one. So we're going to, since I have one big onion, I'm just going to do the other half. And peel the skin, cut it into four sections. Okay, you cut it three times and then dice it into half inch strips. I'm doing quarter inch strips this time, so they're a little bit smaller. But we're going to caramelize these. And we're also going to caramelize the Brussels sprouts. And I'll show you how to cut those in a little bit once I add the two. And let's separate the bacon first. So that the bacon is actually on the pan. I'm going to get as many pieces on the pan so that it starts to let go of some of that bacon fat. And it will also start to caramelize, so to speak, and brown. But only the pieces that are touching the pan are going to brown. That's why you want as, many, as much of it on the actual pan as possible. Take your wooden spoon and just split it apart. And 
then we're going to go ahead and dice the. Uh, I'm going to add the. I'm going to add the um, onions to this, and then I'll show you how to cut the Brussels sprouts. Or at least I'll show you how I cut the Brussels sprouts. You might find it a different way of cutting it, but this is the way that I do it. I'm going to put the onions in. And now with the Brussels sprouts, you're going to chop off the end with your big butcher knife and hold, hold it, the Brussels sprout with your fingers, cut it into um, quarter inch slices. If you want it smaller, you can also then turn it on the side and cut it in half. So then your Brussels sprout looks like this. Make sense? But it's up to you whether you want to cut it into half, into half like this, or you can just cut it into the side. And you can go ahead and just add that to the um, to the pan with the bacon and the onion. And I'm, gonna make, I'm just going to try to get my onions on the bottom of the pan too. We are going to add some olive oil into it a little bit later, but I want that bacon to kind of saute first. And I'm going to now stir my um, butternut squash. And now my, I, I hear my rice bubbling or boiling. Time that for 20 minutes. Minutes and we'll check on the on the rice to see how how well it's cooking. Now we're just gonna continue with the Brussels sprouts. So this is hold it on the side, cut it into the quarter inch, inch slices, and then turn it on the side if you want and cut it in half, and just grab it and throw it into the pan with the onions and the and the bacon. Not the not the onions and the brussels and the butternut squash, but the onions in the bacon. And you're just gonna keep going. And the shortcut is you go to the grocery store and already buy the shredded Brussels sprouts. to be um, sizzling. Is it on your side? Because mine just started to sizzle. So that way you know that that pan is heating up. That's a good thing. Brussels sprouts are one of those cruciferous vegetables, so it's anti-inflammatory. It has also a lot of um, sulfur compounds in it, which are anti-inflammatory. And it has um, indole-3-carbonyl, like the other cruciferous vegetables, that actually helps to metabolize excess estrogen so that the body can eliminate the excess instead of reabsorb it. It's kind of a, it's a pretty cool vegetable. And I found that everybody that you talk to, everybody's like, oh, I love them. It's like a love or hate vegetable. It is a love or hate vegetable. And and I, um, I usually bring Brussels sprouts to other people's homes. And even the Brussels sprout haters love the Brussels sprouts when I make them. And I actually had one person who hated Brussels sprouts and actually went for seconds when I brought the Brussels sprouts with bacon and potatoes and dates. Oh, yeah. So this is everything that I'm using vermouth in it instead of vegetable broth.
I remember um, I had a friend of mine. He's like, oh, I got my kids to eat Brussels sprouts. And I said, how did you take care of Oh, I said, well, did you put butter or salt or anything on it? No, just steam. And I was like, I think you discard your children for life. <laughs> They will, they ate it because they love you, but I'm not sure that they'll ever eat Brussels sprouts again. I think that's the most mundane way to make Brussels sprouts. Just steamed. I think I, I bought a family pack of, of Brussels sprouts and it's pretty huge, but it doesn't say how much how much is in? Oh, I have a 32, I have a two pound bag of Brussels sprouts. No wonder I'm going to be chopping for a long time. But I think I'm going to put it at the halfway point. One cup of Brussels sprouts is, or one pound of Brussels sprouts is probably added. Oh, I think I'm going to be eating Brussels sprouts from now until Christmas every single day. <laughs> and I might get tired of it. As much as I like Brussels sprouts, I once actually bought the Brussels sprouts on the on the actual on the stock. Yeah, and as fresh as they were, they were such the biggest pain to get off of that stock. You know, how it, my my theory is try try everything once, and that's. And it's not really try everything because I'm never going to try bungee jumping and I don't think I'll be trying getting a tattoo either. But um, uh, but I tried the Brussels sprouts on the, on, the, on the vine and they were extremely fresh, but because it was such a pain to get off that vine, I said, you know what, never again. I'm just buying them already. So I am back to, I'm going to check on my um oh yeah my my um the butternut squash is starting to caramelize and i don't know if you can see how i have brown brown side to the that's that's what i mean by caramelized and you can see some of the bacon is also caramelizing too that is what you want and the only way you can get that is if you don't stir the often so we have to get some of the other pieces on the bottom so that it starts to caramelize also because that caramelized flavor is so good in both the onions and the butter squash. Compared to all the spices and all the rest of it, when the um, when the rice is done. Well, I'm just going to take a fork and see. And yeah, my butternut squash still has a ways to go. It's not soft at all. So it for sure is not ready. And then I'm going to take my wooden spoon and I'm going to move this over to the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to get an idea with the, of my wooden spoon. This is also starting to cook, and the bacon is starting to caramel, caramelize, and so are the onions. But I'm going to leave this for for another minute. I'm going to cut up a couple more um, Brussels sprouts and add to the pot. And then I'm going to add some oil into that into that pan as well. I'm going to do three more Brussels sprouts. So that's pretty much half of, I'm making half of this bag. So a good pound of Brussels sprouts and a good leftover. You can make them with eggs the next morning. You can have them for a side for, with lunch. You can have them for dinner again. And they do, they do freeze well too, once they're cooked. So that's also an option too.
Now I'm going to have us cut the garlic. The garlic is going in with the um, with the Brussels sprouts. And I think we're going to put in. No, there's no garlic in the in the other one. But take a big, a larger piece of. This garlic is dead. So I'm going to grab a different piece. I'm going to go ahead and smash that garlic with the flat part of the knife, cut the end off, and all the skin should come off much easier once I smash that garlic. And thank you, Gina, for that wonderful tip. I keep sharing it because it's so good. Just gonna dice the the garlic. If you want more garlic, feel free to add more. But I think one or two cloves is gonna be adequate. And you're gonna add this into the Brussels sprouts. Because I like garlic, I'm gonna do a second one. It's so quiet tonight. Pardon me? So it's so quiet tonight. No, I'm not really saying that much, am I? All right, so I'm gonna put some salt on this on the um butternut squash. And we'll do the same thing with the Brussels sprouts. And then we're gonna take three or four dates and chop them up. If you don't want to use dates, you can just use some raisins. Or you can buy you can use um, dried cranberries or dried cherries. And the other thing you could do if you wanted, I'm gonna do this I think on Thursday, is you can add mushrooms in with the um, with the butternut squash. I think that might just add a little bit extra zing to it. Add a couple of these mushrooms into in with the butternut sauce. And I'm going to stir it again. It looks like the, the butternut squash is starting to cook, but it still has a nice smell. Yeah, and I just checked my rice and my rice is done. So I just I Your just turned it on. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's just ironic, but yeah, it is. Yeah, it's done. So in fact, it was starting to I think it was going a little bit too fast. So I added a little more stock to it. Okay. Yeah, my mine, mine still has a ways to go. It's still just bubbling away. But there's plenty of liquid in mine. Did you did you uh, soak yours today too? Yeah, and I you know what I I didn't really start soaking it until about like three o'clock. Well, did you try the rice to see if it's actually cooked? Yeah, I was gonna I'm gonna try it again just to double check, but it was soaked. Mine's still pretty hard. It soaked, up, pretty hard. It's soaked up all the liquid, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna yeah. double check. Well, usually what I have found with the with, uh, with the wild rice is. You really need two and a half cups liquid to one cup rice. Well, yeah. Well, I had I had a cup 
And yeah, I mean, I had like four cups of liquid, so. Yeah. All right, now it's time to stir the Brussels sprouts. And this is where you can drizzle some olive oil on here. Yep, my, my rice is done. All right, well, lucky you, mine is not. Turn that, turn it off. Yeah, I just, I just turned mine off. Yeah, I just turned mine off and I just have it covered. I added a little bit of um, olive oil to my Brussels sprouts and that helped them kind of saute and brown a little bit. And then, like I said, if you want to use raisins, you can use raisins. I'm going to use a couple. Oh. You put apricots if you want into the in the box, but I'm going to put I'm going to do three of these big dates. I have to take the pit out. Well, I'm going to show you how I do that. And luckily, we don't, we're don't. we not making any meat, so we can just continue using the same, um, the same cutting board and the same knife. Because I'm assuming that you are going to be making some kind of meat on Thursday for Thanksgiving. My favorite is always with uh, rosemary, thyme, and garlic. No, I'm just gonna do two of these. Because they're pretty big. So if you're doing if you're gonna add a date, cut it into sixes. You're gonna and we're adding that. That goes into the Brussels sprout. That goes into the Brussels sprouts, right? This goes into the Brussels sprouts, yes. Okay. And I am going to add a little bit of vegetable broth into my into like a quarter cup of the vegetable broth into the pan with the um, squash because mine's starting to burn on the bottom. Yeah, I'm kind of doing the same thing. So that's the way to do it is toss the liquid into it. And I think the vegetable broth will help it to kind of cook. But you're basically going to just chop up that or dice up that, uh, that date and just put it into the, try to break it up and you put it into the pan, but the challenge is dates are really sticky. How many dates did you say you were using, Joanna? Two. Okay. The mine were pretty big. Yeah. They definitely have to wash your hands after those because the hands are sticky. <laughs> We're going to add all the spices into the, the butternut squash. The butternut squash is going to have some mild curry, a half a teaspoon of curry. And see, you know I'm tired because I didn't even pull out the ingredients for the recipe. Um, Round 
Half a teaspoon of mild curry, half a teaspoon of brown cinnamon, half a teaspoon of either cayenne pepper or I like the ancho chili pepper. Ancho chili pepper. And then I did buy some some dried cherries. So there'll be some dried cherries that go into this recipe. There'll be three tablespoons of the dried unsweet the dried cherries. Um, we're going to chop up some parts of the sheep into the bed. Then a tablespoon of sage. And you can put a quarter cup of walnuts into that one too. Now remember, we're putting this into the butternut squash. Okay, so it's a half a teaspoon there it is half a teaspoon of the curry and the cinnamon and the ancho chili pepper. Actually, it's only a quarter of the ant of chili. And a tablespoon of the sage. That, that must mean that the rice is supposed to be ready. I'm going to check the rice. Mine still has liquid in it. Still needs another five minutes. So always test your rice before you use it. I don't think anybody wants a crispy rice. The one tablespoon is almost it's like one and a half teaspoons. So you can put either if you don't want to use a tablespoon, use that half a teaspoon and just put in three or four of the scoops of the of the sage. Put in curry, cinnamon, um, either cayenne or the ancho chili pepper and fresh chip sage. And then we're going to put in a half a cup of um, parsley. And I need to find the last part that I'm supposed to add in there. I still don't have cinnamon. That's what I'm missing. I don't have cinnamon. Oh well. Now I'm going to go back to the Brussels sprouts and at least stir them because I want all the Brussels sprouts to caramelize. Parsley, that's what we need. Parsley, time to chop the parsley. And you'll be happy to know I have fresh parsley today. It's not dried like it has been the last few weeks. Fresh parsley. So I'm just gonna take a big chunk of it like this and you're gonna just try to smoosh it together as best as you can and just um, chop it up into like quarter inch pieces with that big butcher knife. And then you're going to take that big butcher knife and actually cut it on the other side just to make sure that it's cut up. And this you're going to put right into that squash. 
and that should be good and diced. So it's about a half a cup. And I just might add more. Put that in with the squash. And parsley is another like great detoxifier. So it's got this great chlorophyll in it. It's a, it helps to detoxify the liver, the body, and it's got a lot of B vitamins in it too. So it's one of those healthy spices. The best one fresh. And then snuff up more of that parsley if you want a cup of it. And then just go ahead and put that in with your squash. And I am going to try the, um, I'm gonna try my rice to see if it's closer to cooked. Mine still has quite a bit of liquid in it though. So I'm gonna take the lid off. Mine's still not, not quite there. So I'm not gonna take the lid off because it needs to cook. Or I might actually turn up the heat a teeny bit. Get it to furiously boil. Let's see what happens. All right, so I think the, the squash is ready. So if you if your rice is ready, take the squash mixture and mix it in with your mix it in with your <laughs> rice. I'm gonna turn my my squash off because it's already done. I don't want it to be overcooked. It's in the Brussels sprouts. This is what mine looks like. And they're, they're kind of becoming translucent and they're also caramelizing, which is what I what we want. Okay, and what were we doing with the, did we do anything with the, um, what do you call it? Um, the apple cider vinegar or the, the maple syrup yet? Oh, the apple cider vinegar, we're putting that in with, you know what, that's supposed to go in with the, uh, with the squash. The squash too, right? Yeah, that's going in with the squash. And, and because I'm going to use dried cherries that are sweetened, I'm not going to put the, uh, um, I'm not going to put syrup. the maple syrup in, yeah, because I think it'll just be too sweet. So go ahead and add you're adding, the, you're you're adding the squash in, into the rice, right? You're putting the squash into the rice, but before you do that, put the Put a, put a little bit of either the lemon or the um, the apple cider vinegar into it. Okay. I'm going to put the cherries into the, the handful of cherries in with the butternut squash. And maybe I should have so two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. It means you'll have to turn that back on to get it all kind of cooked together and cooked down. Two tablespoons. Stay. Shane, stay. Okay. Just kind of stir that in the apple cider vinegar. This is 
food just on its own. Like I want to eat it just as it as is. I'm gonna try my my rice. Now my rice is ready. But the butter before we add the rice or the oxygen rice, I want you to put the between the two of the vermouth. Two tablespoons of vermouth into your Brussels sprouts. Okay. Say that again. Two tablespoons of dry vermouth into your Brussels sprouts. Oh, okay. The same stuff that you put into dry martini. Right. It's just, a, it's just for purposes, not for the alcohol content. And there looks yummy. And then with the, um, you can put the quarter cup of walnuts. And I'm just, here's my quarter cup. I'm just putting a handful, a big handful in with the, the chopped walnuts into the squash. And now, and I think with the Brussels sprouts, mine are done, so I'm going to turn them off. Yeah, I think mine are pretty well done, too. So you have a choice. You can either take the rice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rice. I do this left-handed. Um, and pour it in into the squash. Then I'm gonna mix it all together and put it back into the pot for this is where you might need a you know a fork and a spoon because you want to just fold it together. Okay. Maybe you want two spoons. So you're just gonna blend it all together. And the cool thing about this, I think, is that if you want to make more of the of if you think you have too much rice and you want more of the squash, you can just make more squash and add it in. But it looks good. does look good. Now we're going to have the fun part, right? You know what the best part is? Trying it. What were the, what were the pepitas for? That's going on top of the Brussels sprouts. Okay. If you want to use walnuts, you can do that too. But you're going to put a handful of the pepitas in with the Brussels puff and just stir that together. And you can always just wait till you serve it to add it because the sooner you add the pepitas in, they're crunchy right now because they're roasted. Right. They'll get, they may get a little soggy from the Brussels sprouts. So depending on if you want it more crunchy or less crunchy, you can decide as to when you want to add it. Make sense? Yeah. So there are my Brussels sprouts. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of this. And that's what mine looks like. What does yours look like? 
mine is still in the pan, but I'll show you the the pan. Well, let's let's change the the setting here so that we can see yours. Uh, so, what's yours look like? Yeah, I'm just trying to get my camera flipped around. Flip. Flip. Oh, there it is. I was trying to find my. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, those are Brussels sprouts. And there's, and is that what the rice and the squash is supposed to look like? Yes. Okay. That's what mine looks like. Can All you right, see cool. it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's very chunky. But it's not like, it's not like the, uh, the ice cream chunky monkey, you know? So now it's the, the best time of the, of the class where we get to try it all. But you probably want to see me, don't you? Hi. Hi. Can you? All right. So I think I'm going to try it separately first before I try it together. And if you have chicken left over from lunch or from dinner, feel free to add that on the side and have that as a complete meal. Mmm. Brussels sprouts are really good. That's the first time I've used vermouth with Brussels sprouts. And I kind of like it. It gives it a little bit of a bitterness to it. And then the, and then the nuts actually give it a nice little crunch. Very good. I'll give myself a pat on the back and I need you to give yourself a pat on the back for putting it all together. That is really good. The wild rice one is really good. Those spices are awesome. And mine's, mine's even without the cinnamon, but really nice combination. So I think you'll like it. And it could be a new tradition for your um, Thanksgiving, or it could just be a new tradition for any time you wanna have something that's a little bit more healthy. Um, using some of the fall vegetables. That is good. Actually, what I was thinking about doing since I had, um, what do you call it? I had chestnuts in the freezer. I was actually thinking about putting chestnuts in it. Yeah, you could do the chestnuts too. I was thinking about that because last year we made chestnuts. And um, so you could definitely add chestnuts in here, um, either in addition to or just in place of the walnuts, but you can right. for sure add chestnuts in here. And I think those would be a really good addition. Yeah. And I had, um, he got his insulin already. Okay. I, Didn't back out. have you tried it together yet? No. Try it together. And I, together, um, it's, it, together it's really re amazing. And I actually, I had some, uh, some of the leaf left over from last time. I still had one left over. So I used that instead of the onion and it was it actually was really good. I love using leeks um, a lot of times in place of onions. It just adds a nice little different zing. Yeah. So our next class was going to be the second week of, February, of, of December and it's going to be cheesy portobello chicken cutlets with broccoli. Ooh. And I know, Santa, and that means that we need to find a different vegetable for you because your significant other is not a fan of broccoli. But we'll do the best we can. But it sounded like a nice little combination. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so happy Thanksgiving. You too. Enjoy. Yes, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy you guys tonight and on Thursday and after that. And if you're watching the replay, let me know how yours turns out. Oh, Make sure the together. comments below. Share with whoever you want. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you have any questions, you can contact me, Joanna Hodorowska at nutritioninmotion.net. Enjoy. Yummy. Thanks, guys. <laughs>